Hello everybody, and in today's video we're going to be looking into the question, why learn piano? And so if your question is, why take piano lessons, then my answer is, exactly. So rather than me listing off some of the benefits of what it is to do lessons, rather, this is an opportunity for you to think about why it is that you take lessons. So if you have a practice diary, now is the time to get it out. You may want to pause the video um, and go and get your practice diary. But what I would like you to do is to list three reasons why you learn piano. So this may sound like a little bit of a strange task, but ultimately, whenever you're finding that things are going really well with your piano learning, you're going to feel fantastic. You are inevitably going to feel that things don't always go so well in your learning. Sometimes you will come across some challenges and you may not, not feel so fantastic then. But the idea here is that by writing it down, you have got a clear understanding of what exactly your goals are, what the reasons are that you actually want to learn piano. And the idea is that just levels out those peaks and troughs. It just sends you on a long term and um, 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 upward sort of trend really of um, just doing really, really well with your piano learning. And so the reasons you learn the piano could be numerous. Uh, I mean, for me, one of the reasons that I love the piano so much is um, it's just the communication factor. So I feel that whenever I'm playing, I'm, I'm saying something that is, um, it just feels right, it just feels real. Um, we can't always express that um, that much through words. You know, we have to sort of choose our words very carefully. Our words have to have real intention. And that's all fine and well, but there's always a sort of a layer and, and maybe even a degree of superficiality whenever it comes to, to that form of communication. But whenever you have an, an piano and music and art, there's, there's something I think a little bit deeper there in the sense that one can communicate things in that slightly more removed, slightly more abstract way. You can make people feel things whenever you're playing in concerts. You can really feel the, 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 the audience come with you and whenever you want to take the music in a certain direction. And it's just such an exciting, rewarding feeling. You're, you're, you're creating an energy. And, and, and that's something that I think is, is, um, um, is really, really special about what it is to learn uh, piano for me anyway. You could have some other reasons. You could be particularly good at the piano and that is something that makes you feel good. You may have a terrible voice. You may just like the sound of the piano. There are lots and lots of reasons, but those are some that might get you started. And so once you've written down your whys of piano playing, I'd like you now to think about what your goals are. So what do you have coming up? Do you have any exams coming up? Do you have any performances coming up? Any competitions? Sometimes you won't always have those deadlines to work to, and deadlines can be quite a useful thing in terms of exams. I know that can seem a little bit daunting, but usually it's not the case. Usually it's giving you an absolute um, date by which you need to achieve things and that helps you to structure things, which is why I'm generally speaking an advocate for exams. But even then, you still need to choose, um, or it's still better to choose when you actually take the exam. It's very easy, I think, to get into the swing of just sort of learning a piece and kind of eventually getting there and hoping it all comes together for the exam. But if you specifically pick a date to work to um, and, and write that down in your own words, so by um, um, spring 2021, I will have completed my grade five piano exam. Something like that in your own words. You've chosen the date, you're writing it down. And every time you practice, what I'd like you to do is to open up your diary and to say that out loud. So this um, may seem very different from what you've done before, but I really want you to trust me on this. You will not be disappointed. This ultimately comes down to mindset. So the whole mindfulness thing is, is a huge thing in music and music education at the moment. Um, and of course it can mean so many different things and it can be quite a nebulous thing, quite an intangible thing at times. How do you know the things, if things work? How do you know they don't work? This is something that is ultimately programming your mind and you can choose either to sort of meander through a piece until you get it, which is probably gonna take more time than if you have a definite goal, if you're saying that out loud and if your mind is, is programmed and attuned um, into achieving and realizing that goal. If you'd like some guidance about when to actually take your exam, what I'm gonna do is post the link below this video to the ABRSM website, which shows an indication of guided learning hours. So if that's a little bit new to you, basically in this link, there are 
and um, there is some information that tells you uh, approximately how many lessons you'll need, how many hours of tuition you'll need, and how much practice time you'll need before you actually take the exam. And that can be a really, really useful starting point for you to actually make that, that goal, that second step. So we've considered the big picture in terms of why you actually want to learn the piano, why you do learn the piano. We've considered, um, I don't know, the sort of medium picture in the sense that you've got a, a medium term goal to work towards. And now what we want to do is we want to consider just the more sort of week by week goals. And so the key to this is basically making sure that you leave every single piano lesson understanding exactly what it is that you need to do for the next week. So this is really informing your practice. Let's say at the end of every lesson, you've even just one thing that you want to um, improve over the next week in your playing. Your practice over the next seven days until the next lesson will reflect that goal and you will find then that you're making incremental steps towards that medium um, goal picture of uh, taking, let's say the exam, whatever that goal is, and then working towards that larger reason, why do I actually take piano? So I hope you find this helpful in terms of actually getting the most productivity from your piano lessons. It's a real commitment uh, to dedicate that much um, um, of your finances as well as your time to the piano. Uh, and you will feel sometimes it's going really well, sometimes it's not going well. But ultimately, if you have a definite purpose uh, and you have small um, uh, tasks and goals that will help you get towards that, you're going to find that your productivity and your enjoyment and all those wonderful things that go along with learning the piano will just, uh, you know, increase um, um, just, just so much, just so much. So if you feel you learned something from this video today, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and as always comment. Thank you.